In the ancient past, Amerahalia, the land was barren and unjust. Plants could not grow well enough to feed the people and Pokemon of the region, so what little fauna did grace the land was mercilessly fought over. Pokemon could not go strong and only ever fought to live. No loyalty, no attachments. It was a miserable existence. Two Pokemon, a weak cub and an ugly calf, gaze upon their land in despair, dreaming of a better tomorrow. However, unlike most prayers, these were answered. As of lightning, a ram struck down from the heavens and crowned these two Pokemon, the king and queen of Merahalia. The weak cub became Ogabalinx and taught Pokemon how to fight with honor and dignity, allowing tribes to be established, giving a newfound sense of camaraderie to the land. The ugly calf became Boshawthorn. It wandered around the region, growing forests and grasslands, nourishing the region's residents, balancing the ecosystem so there was prey for the predators to hunt. Over time, people and Pokemon go to worship these legendaries as deities. And during this time, it was believed that Merahalia was the most beautiful place on Earth. However, the once noble nature of these Pokemon began to falter under the constant onslaught of praise by their subjects. To put it bluntly, the king and queen became horribly selfish. Ogabalinx began only training Pokemon that showed promise in battle, taking its charity away from those it thought were weak. The once nomadic Bushawthorn stopped its constant trekking, only bringing its touch to certain areas, whether it benefited others or not. Those being affected by these new conditions were too malnourished and uncoordinated to do anything about it. The once beautiful region began to grow back its darker spots, and from those dark spots arose a dark, shadow-like beast. No one knows where it came from or how it grew in power, but when it arose, it gave the Forsaken of the region new purpose to destroy Ogobolinx and Bushawthorn. The war lasted decades, tearing apart the region, quite literally, as grimly as it was in a manner of speaking. The subjects of the kingdom turned against their rulers, seeing them for the vain creatures they had become. Not that the Dark Beast was any better, just more honest in its destructive nature. The king and queen were on the brink of defeat until the Thunder Ram returned defeating the Dark Beast with ease. But it revealed that it had been overseeing Ogobolinx and Bushawthorn's reign and was disgusted. These Pokemon, with wonderful dreams of saving the land they had once called home, left it in ruins in the name of saving their pride, rather than helping the people and Pokemon they had cast aside. Their powers were taken instantly, and the Thunder Ram disappeared back into the sky. The people and Pokemon, seeing their ruined home, ended the war, and taking the lessons they learned from the now disgraced king and queen, began to maintain their homes, all without their rule. Unfortunately, the battle between the privileged and less fortunate goes on to this day. Perhaps someday, the king and queen might return, humbled from their exile, and once more become worthy of being royalty. <sighs> Let's rip this bandaid off. You read this title right, everybody. This is Pokemon and King and Queen's Last Ride. You see, four years ago, I started this series in 2020 when, you know, the whole world was on fire with COVID, murder hornets, and just everything. So I decided to distract myself by making art videos on YouTube, making a Fikimon region, like Loxton and the Cascade region, Pokemon Cardinal by Hoops and Hops, and of course, most specifically, subjectively, and the Maza region. Working on Pokemon King and Queen got me to fully realize that I want to pursue art as a career. It even helped me grow my channel a little bit. I also learned about other smaller creators who are in the same boat I'm in. But as time's gone on, I've been making content for the Merahalia region less and less. For a majority of reasons, basically. I've been working on other projects, I found more success in non-related Pokemon content, I've graduated, and on top of that, I've simply just grown bored of the Merahalia region. Unfortunately, I feel like I can't 
fully move on to other projects while it's unfinished, but I can't work up the nerve to do my original plans, which were to just add way more Pokemon, regional variants, and finally conceptualize my Pokemon Fusion idea, along with several other things. So this will be my last video on Pokemon King and Queen for a very long time. Possibly ever. And what better way to end off this series than with the legendary Pokemon? So I've had ideas for the legendaries before, but the one who changed the most was Ogabolinx. At first it was a Sphinx, then a Dragon, then a King Bee instead of a Queen Bee. Eventually I just decided to make a creature. See, what everybody often forgets about Pokemon is that they're not animals, they're Pokemon. And Pokemon can be whatever. And legendary Pokemon, while having only one of each, like sometimes, is also a species. They may have arcane power, but in most cases they eat, sleep, and roam around like most other animals do. Being less of a god and more of a creature that can blow up a continent. Regardless, I wanted these Pokemon to have a layers upon layers of real world legends. And since this was a combination of Egypt and other African countries, I took the idea to base these two legends off Arisha from Yoruba mythology and Egyptian gods. A combination of two gods of war, Ogun and Horus. Horus is also the god of kingship, so yeah, that works out well too. Ogun is also the god of metal, thus Ogabolinx can use its many minerals in its body to create weapons or tools for others to use. I kept some of the Sphinx inspiration for the whole bird situation we got on here. I imagine this guy can fly by making metal wings, but just doesn't. It started out as a creature of the land, after all. Now onto the queen. Gonna be honest, I spent a lot less time on this one. These legendaries are based off of one of the mythological origins of death. Basically, a goddess wanted to hook up with a mortal, so the goddess is dead, put the mortal through a bunch of tests, and one of them involved a cow, and the goddess cheated using a bee, and then she got banned from the heavens, and then her brother found out she went back to the heavens. It's the whole thing. I'm not gonna be able to do it justice in this video, but to cut it short, I wanted to make this legendary a cow. Cows often symbolize life because of the food they provide. And the opposite of war is peace. Bushathorn is based on Hathor, the Egyptian goddess of music, love, and beauty, as well as Ocean, the Orisha of life. And finally, it's also part peacock and white lotus. My only real problem with this Pokemon is that the proportions I gave it make it look a lot smaller than it's supposed to be. I also worry nobody would be able to figure out it's supposed to be a cow. And legendaries don't play with their proportions. Look at Sogaleo, now look at Pyroar. One is a legendary, one is a regular Pokemon. And I'll give you a hint, it's not Pyroar. However, I do like the colors I use and the vines having gold planing that can be used for a crown. The last detail they needed fixing was the white lotus on the back. It looked way too plain, so I added the Pokemon version of the Eye of Horus. When it uses the full extent of its psychic power, the fauna around its body will glow with purple light. I hope this came out okay, because it's the last Pokemon I will ever design. For now at least. The sun arose on August 2020, and now it sets on July 2024. And just 
wow, this it's over. I've been at this project for like so long, it's really a lot to just drop it here. But don't worry, this is not my last Pokemon video at all. But for the Marahalia region, I bid you adieu.